Module 6, the Han sculpture, tomb figurines, metal work, mirrors and ceramic vessels. I, Dr. Rita Pratap, former head of the department, drawing and painting, University of Rajasthan, Jaipur. I am going to speak on the Han sculpture, tomb figurines, metal work, mirrors and ceramic vessels. A great number of small earthenware, burial figurines have survived. Han sculptures in bronze, Han tomb figurines, many of which are realistic and lively and show the activities of everyday life. Han ceramic vessels were made for daily use and as grave goods and were most often lead glazed. For daily use, iron glazed stoneware, the later Chinese ceramics continued to be developed and refined. Mirrors to continue to be well cast and designs at the back show new creativity. The TS, LS and VS in pattern usually date from the western Han. Though a great number of small earthenware burial figurines have survived in great numbers, but large formal sculptural monuments are exceedingly rare. The compact motif at the tomb of Hao Chu Ping recalls Shang motifs and animal style. The sculpture of a horse, Hsian Ping, Hsian Shangxi China, belonging to Western Han Dynasty, dated to circa 117 BCE is at present in the Shaanxi Provincial Museum. With an incidental figure of a man at this tomb is solidly contained within the stone block. The horse, though in the round, is block-like and the stone is not cut away beneath. The ribs of the man and the muscles of the horse legs are indicated by grooving rather than by modeling in relief. The head with its heavy crescent of the cheek is a characteristic Chinese rendering which becomes an even more noticeable later on. At the same tomb is a sculpture carved from or rather on a large boulder. The carving is in relatively low relief on the surface of the stone. A beer vessels with his large augury like man provided with extraordinary prominent incisors. Again, as the horse follows the four square block, this figure follows the natural form of the boulder. Both sculptures are determined by the contours of the original stone. Such relative limitation or better such respect for original material is characteristic of most archaic sculpture. The development of sculpture from a lack of desire to interfere with the stone to growing virtuosity which delights in cutting into the block is characteristic of most western as well as oriental sculptural styles. The funeral pillar of Governor Shen is carved in stone, belongs to eastern Han dynasty and dated to 2nd century CE. It is a stone imitation of a tower with 
tile roof. Under the roof are stone renderings of architectural bracketing and of scenes of combat. A nude warrior with a bow is shooting at an ox like animal while being pursued in turn by a dragon and a running figure with flying birds. The scene occurs on the surface of the architectural details. A monkey hangs under the bracketing. The dragon cuts across the architrave. The sculpture has bust the bounds of the stimulated architecture. During Han Dynasty, bronze continued to be used both for ritual and utilitarian object. Excavated Han tombs were found to contain brass swords, carriage fittings, belt, buckles and assorted household utensils, sometimes richly decorated with inlays of gold, silver, turquoise or jade. Another artifact delineated in bronze is the flying horse. It belongs to Eastern Han Dynasty and dated to 2nd century CE. At present, it is in the Historical Museum, Beijing. Found in the tomb of Governor General Chang at Wu Vi in Gansu. In the Eastern Han sculpture, the realism of pose and movement of the horse is new and sophisticated. The swallow depicted beneath the rear right hoof of the galloping horse may refer to name of the steed as the Chinese had a penchant for the poetic naming of the spirited horses. Far to the southwest in Hunan province, a unique group of bronze objects and sculptures were found between 1955 and 1960. Another bones ritual object in the form of two bulls and a tiger is found from Liad Shan, Hunan, China and belongs to Western Han Dynasty dated 3rd to 2nd century BCE. And at present in the Yunnan Provincial Museum. Here the bronze animal is sleekly and naturalistically modeled and cast by the lost wax process. Burial substitutes from the Han period include small earthenware, tomb figures of horses, dogs and people. Han tomb figurines. Among the Han tomb figurines, the seated mastiff is one of the thousands of appealing animals in the Han ceramic mangiri of tomb figurines. Some are of clay alone, others of grey clay with a covering of white slip and still others have an olive or deep green lead glaze that deteriorates on burial. This mastiff in grey clay with white slip decoration is admirable for its snowing naturalism. Sculptors of these figures knew animal so thoroughly pigs, chickens and other favorite subjects that they produced them in a rough and ready naturalistic style.
style with no thought of formal decorative development. Tome figurines thus gives us a glimpse of Han culture and are some of the best documented of life of the folk. Another excavation in Sichuan has uncovered many realistic lively clay tome figurines to Han date. Uncovered in recent years, the most refreshing is the seated man cupping his ear is earthenware in the collection of Palace Museum, Beijing. This figurine shows the activities of everyday life. Many of them are entertainers, musicians, actors, storytellers, jesters, jugglers and dancers depicted in performance with a verb and naturalism or at times transformed into caricature. Salt mining scene. This belongs to Sichuan province, Han dynasty and dated to 2nd century. It is an impressed earthenware tile and at present in New York collection. This decorated tome tile depicts salt miners at work and hunters shooting at game. The direct scene in the lower left was used to drill for salt which was subsequently dissolved in water and dried in pans. Tome model of a house. This belongs to Han dynasty. It is a painted earthenware and at present in the Nelson Attican Museum, Kansas City, Missouri. Painting in unfired pigments over white slip, this funerary model shows the type of wall painting that were presumably painted on imperial palaces during the Han period. The elaborate painting on this model includes birds perched in the stylized trees flanking the double door on the ground floor. Gentlemen in conversation. This belongs to Han dynasty. Dated to 1st century, it is a painted earthenware tile, linted and at present in the Museum of Fine Arts, Boston. The artist responsible for this early example of brush painting used rapidly executed brush stroke of varying thickness to convey the distinctive character of each figure in this lively narrative scene. Confucian influence is felt in the emphasis on a humanistic secular subject matter. The clarity of the non overlapping figures and the underlying sense of restraint and orderliness long associated with immorality jade was believed to have the power to preserve and entombed bodies the burial suit in princess dao wan's tomb was found in a collapsed state and reassembled to its original form. Detail of a burial suit, tomb of Princess Dao Wen, Mencheng, Hebei province, 
belonging to Han dynasty dated to 2nd century BCE. Jade Suin with gold thread and at present in the National Museum, Beijing. Jade shrouds were sewn with gold, silver or copper threads depending on the rank of the deceased. The 2016 pieces of jade of Princess Dao Wen burial suit was sewn with gold thread through holes made at the four corners. Han Metalwork In 1968, the discovery of the tombs of Prince Liu Sheng, dated to 113 BCE, and his wife Princess Dao Wan at Mancheng in Hebei, about 87 miles northwest of Beijing, added a wealth of material to the previously known significant Han metalwork. Their grave goods were even more spectacular find than those of Fu Hao from Shang dynasty Anyang. Though 3000 objects in various materials was found including some of the most beautiful and elaborate metal work. Lamp in the form of a young girl, it is made up of glint bronze and it is found from the tomb of Dao Wan. Mancheng Hebei. It belongs to Western Han Dynasty, dated to 2nd century BCE. It is at present it is in the Hebei Provincial Museum. The gilt bronze lamp bearer is not only an ingenious device, the lamp has a sliding door to control the amount and direction of light and the smoke is vented to the rear by the servant's hollow sleeve, but also a convincing representation of a kneeling and offering figure. The realism of pose of garment owes much to the innovations of late Chow and of Qin. The gold inlaid bronze sensor, it is also found from the tomb of Liu Sheng, Mancheng, Hebei, China, belongs to Western Han dynasty dated to circa 113 BCE and at present in Hebei Provincial Museum. With its pierced lid of mountains inhabited by birds, animals and huntsmen, surely embodies an aristocratic taste for elegant technique, sophisticated representation and knowing symbolism. Money container This is also made up of bronze and at present in the Yunnan Provincial Museum. The handles of this money container are in the form of tigers and the lid is adorned with cattle, a horse and its rider. Decorative plaque. This is also made up of bronze and it is at present in the Yunnan Provincial Museum. The observation of the Dian bronze workers reproduces the smallest details 
in the depiction of his subject five men are tying an ox to a post so tightly that it cannot move one holds it by the tail another is bending down to tie the rope crouching figure it is made up of bronze and at present in the yunnan provincial museum the figure is that of dan people wearing large earring a sword a belt with a plaque and clock ornamented with animal motifs originally he was probably holding the wooden handle of a bronze umbrella leopards lying down this is dated to 104 bc it is made up of bronze partly gilded with silver and gemstone in tarsia work and it is found from the tomb of dau wan and at present in the hibi provincial museum two beautifully worked bronze statues with gemstone eyes the markings are imitated by silver in tarsia work and gilding the yui culture lived by agriculture fish farming and trade at the beginning of the han dynasty they had combined into a kingdom which was eternally ruled by chinese foreigner the yui lived in houses on stilts and had preserved rites fundamentally different from those of the north they venerated objects in different forms large bronze drums with graphic ornamentation and animal figure are particularly typical of the decorative style of yui their finely engraved patterns reappear as background decoration on dan bronzes an example can be seen from the drum of the yui type belonging to han period and at present in dresden museum with shallow geometrical decoration made up of bronze mirrors mirrors found here to continue to be well cast and the design of the back shows new creativity mirror with tlv design it is made up of bronze belong to western han dynasty and at present in the freer gallery of art washington dc the tlv type is because of the apparent ts ls and vs in the pattern usually dates from western han and is an adaptation of a sundial design thus making the back of the mirror into a cosmic symbol all of the design elements in the mountain in the middle the four directions and the ts ls and vs are related to solar orientation and the mirror a source of light and insight is a figurative sun the fantastic animals of the four directions are portrayed in thread relief in mirror dated to 174 ce belonging to eastern han dynasty and at present in the freer gallery of art synthesonian institution washington dc the decoration consists of the deities 
of East and West, Dong Wang Gong and Hisi Wang Mu respectively, and two horse drawn carriages bearing figures presumably immortals are carved. The evidence of architectural models found in Dian graves proves that the Dian people built much more in the style of Southeast Asia than of Central China. An example is of a model of a dwelling belonging to Western Han period, bronze and at present in Yunnan Provincial Museum. Models of house built on slits show that the dwellings of the Dan people followed the Southeast Asian style of architecture. An idea of the architecture of the time can be seen from the depiction on relief from models of houses buried with the dead as grave goods. Faithful copies they reveal not only the architecture of the period but also how the world beyond was conceived. There were buildings of several floors, watchtowers and houses, sometimes small, sometimes extensive. Few examples can be quoted. Watchtower belongs to Han period, tower with several floors made by green lead glazing at present in the Munich Museum. Another example is of Chuang Yuan farmhouse made in pottery with remains of painting applied, cold can be taken apart, now in the collection of Henan Provincial Museum. Model of a granary belongs to Han period made of ceramic with green glaze and at present in the Munich Museum. Model of a well belongs to Han period. It is pottery with iridescent glaze at present in the collection of Munich Museum. Round and tile belonging to Qin to Han period with 12 character inscriptions in Chiao Chuan script and at present in the collection of Shaanxi Provincial Museum. Levitry with pigsty and milestone. This artifact belongs to Han period made up of pottery with iridescent glaze and at present in the collection of Munich Museum. Model of a garden pond belongs to Eastern Han Dynasty and at present in the Sichuan Provincial Museum. A fish pond comprising three basins, one containing only lotuses can be regarded as a kind of kitchen garden pond. Models and wall decorations intended for the dead can help us to reconstruct the world of ordinary life. The tombs contained lifelike figure of dancers, musicians, servant and horsemen. These figure are an interesting interim stage in the Chinese understanding of sculptural form. An example is of a Lady Neong, Western Han Dynasty made of ceramic and at present in Munich Museum. Here the lady's face is realistic but her body remains a relatively unified shape hidden by the simplified sculptural form created by the garments. Han ceramic vessels. Han ceramic vessels served for daily use and as grave goods. They were found more often glazed, a technique which appears to be an importation from the Mediterranean world. One of the most characteristic forms of lead glaze burial pottery is the hill jar. Hill jar with cover 
belonging to Han dynasty and at present in the Freer Gallery of Art, Washington DC. A cylinder on three beer shaped legs with cover representing the magic mountain, the axis of the universe. The Chinese have always had great reverence for mountains and mountains become the dominant element in Chinese landscape painting called mountain on water pictures. On the hill jar cover the wave of the world, sea lap at the base of the world mountains. The bodies of such jars often show a freeze of animal combat or hunting scene coupled with representation of diosed sage wonders. These are executed in a style already seen in late Chow bronzes. In utilitarian ceramics, there was continued development and refinement of the glazed stoneware, which led to the great Chinese industry for daily use, iron glazed stoneware, the origin of later Chinese ceramic, continued to be developed and refined. Han potters learned to cover the whole pot with a uniform and rather thick glaze whose olive color was derived from iron oxide. This ware was produced in South China, not far from the present day Shanghai and is called Yu ware, basin Yu ware with incised fish decor in the center. It is today in the Parvikal David Foundation of Chinese Art, London. Yu is the first of the classic Chinese ware which excelled towards the end of Han dynasty. Han textiles Sir Aurel Steen, Peter K. Kozlov and others found remnants of textiles in Central Asia. The mask with design of mountains and birds belongs to Han dynasty and at present in the state hermitage St. Petersburg. This silk has stylized designs of mountains, trees and birds. In this silk damask, the two mountains are constructed in a rather geometric stepped pyramid fashion and the trees look like enlarged mushrooms. Two birds sit on each mountain on either side of the central tree motif, making a balanced formal design. A distant ancestor of the great landscape tradition of later Chinese painting. Funerary banner about 168 BC, painted silk, grave of the Marchioness Dai and at present in Hunan Provincial Museum. The artist who painted the banner was following the ideological conventions of his time and produced images whose forms can be recognized and to some extent classified. The banner is not to be seen as an independent work of pre-trial art, one created like wall paintings in tomes in the context of aristocratic funerary customs. Its ornamental motif clearly present a pragmatic theme wishing for the protection and immortal survival of the dead. The horizontal area of the banner depicts heaven. Below is the world in form of a female figure with servants. The lower part of the banner shows the underworld. This banner was a kind of passport for the Han soul on the way to heaven. The fact that shows both the lady and her grave would see to support this. 